what I'm going to talk about today are butterflies that you will um, commonly see in your area in August and September. Um, so we're going to start with just um, what's the difference between butterflies and moths? And you may very well know this, but it's good to be reminded. So, and there are always exceptions. Um, nature does not put things into neat boxes, but for the most part, butterflies will um, fly during the during the day, and moths will fly at night. Um, the, the Butterfly will um, hold the wings, um, the resting position is uh, behind it, as opposed to the moth that, that usually spreads out um, side to side. The antennae, uh, the butterfly has usually these clubs at the end of their um, antennae, as opposed to the uh, moths that have a uh, feathery um, antenna. And the feeding behavior, the, um, the butterfly, the adult butterfly has this proboscis, which is curled up um, under its, um, you know, the, the head, and will um, let it out so that it can suck nectar or, or suck, uh, suck things, as opposed to the, um, the moth, where there's no um, no proboscis, and it survives as an adult on the um, on the fat that um, was stored during the larval or the caterpillar stage. Um, the butterfly will usually um, use the sun to warm up. So, you the best time to see butterflies is between. 10 in the morning and four in the afternoon. Um, but the, the moth um, moves its wings to, to warm itself. And then the pupa, which is one stage of the, of the butterfly, um, the butterfly has a very hard, um, hard surface to it, as opposed to the, um, the moth that makes a cocoon out of silk. So um, those are some of the major differences. Um, for the butterfly uh, life cycle, there are, for insects, there are two, let's see if I can scroll down here and get this smaller. No, I don't know. I won't worry about it. Um, the, the butterfly has what we call a complete metamorphosis. So they have eggs and then the eggs hatch out and then there's the larva form or the caterpillar. And then it goes into the pupa or the chrysalis and then becomes, um, the adult becomes a butterfly and then it, it repeats its cycle. As opposed to say a grasshopper. A grasshopper will have the egg and then it, it has a nymph form, which is just a little, a, a young, um, looks like a grasshopper, but it doesn't have the wings yet. And, um, but then as it grows, it, it will um, go into being the adult. So, but the butterfly has the, the um, complete metamorphosis. Um, the eggs are as varied as you can get. They, we're going to be talking about eight different butterflies that I, I think you might see in um, the Winston-Salem area right now. Um, and they're all different. And the, um, the eggs are usually no bigger than a, um, a pinpoint. And then they start growing. So after the female will lay the eggs and then they will, um, and they only lay them on a particular plant. We call that a host plant. And even if they nibble up, if the caterpillars nibble up all the leaves on that plant, they won't go over to another plant. They only, they only will eat um, what is the, the host plant. And after about four or five days, they will come out um, to, as caterpillars or the larva form. And again, they are so, so different. Um, and 
I think uh, it's just fun to to learn about the caterpillars. Um, these are basically eating machines. They just eat and eat and eat. And when their skin gets really tight, they will split the skin open and crawl out and they've got looser skin and then they eat and eat meat. And so they are probably, I don't know, four or five um, stages and they we call them molts. Um, each one that gets that's bigger and then after two or three weeks they get to be their full size and um, they will go and find some support and they usually make a J um, hanging and then the body makes this very hard um, pupa and you know, when we think, oh, well, this is their dormant time. It is not their dormant time. A lot is going on at this point. Um, they will, um, the enzymes that, that they have, the, um, the digestive juices, which they then um, let, let go of and, and, and are inside the pupa, um, they simply make a almost a soup of of the insides, and then they um, create a you know a new new mouth. Before they were chomping like this, and now they're going to make this proboscis. Um, they have these four wings. They have. Um, Oh, let's see. Well, they have genitalia so that they are able to um, reproduce. Um, trying to think what else. Um, yeah, they have new legs, new eyes, new mouthpieces, and you know, it's it's just incredible. And so then, after a week or so, they will split open, and the butterfly, the adult, will come out. And this is the most vulnerable time for the um, adult um, butterfly because they have to wait an hour or two to, to pump up the, the liquid in their wings and let those dry before they can fly off. The other really vulnerable time, the most vulnerable is the caterpillar. Out of a hundred caterpillars, maybe two or three are going to reach adulthood. Um, there are lots of predators of the caterpillars. I mean, we have a birdhouse out, out here, a, a bluebird nest, and you're seeing these male and female bluebirds um, in the spring coming with all these caterpillars, and, you know, they have to feed those, those babies. And so only two or three out of a hundred um, caterpillars will, will reach um, adults. Um, there are five families of butterflies. And what I'd like to do is I'd, I'd like to um, take them separately. And um, for four of them, I'm just going to share one, one which is common. And then for the brush uh, foot, I'm going to um, have four, four of them too. So but let, let's start with the swallowtail that a lot of people know about this because it's, it's often a, a, large, um, a large butterfly and the um, it's called swallowtail because all of them have little uh, tails, uh, one one um, protruding um, tail on each side of the of the hind wings. They're often powerful, um, and they are um, they're round. Now, the one that I chose to talk about today is the eastern tiger. Swallowtail, which is the um, North Carolina's um, state butterfly. And so the male, you see why it's called tiger because it's got uh, yellow and it has black, black stripes on it. The female actually comes in two different turn, two different um, ways of, of coming. One is um, looks very much like the male, um, although it has more blue on the hind hind wings. And these are 
um, more in the north. And so if you come south, there, there'll be some, and then they will, um, there'll be more and more of the, of the um, ones that are black for the, for the um, four wings. And then it has a blue at the um, back, back, the hind wings. And um, it is thought that the reason that they, they do that is because um, the pine, the pipe vine swallowtail, the male, its host plant is the pipe vine, which is poisonous. And so the, um, the, the female tiger swallowtail is mimicking the, the male so, um, of the pipe vine. So um, when a bird comes and um, grabs a, a pipe vine swallowtail, it um I've seen seen videos of it and it shakes its head and tries to get rid of it. Um and it doesn't do that again. And so the tiger swallowtail is um is the beneficiary of of that coloring. And just let's look at some of the eggs. It's they're they're often on tulip um tulip leaves, tulip tree leaves, and it's just kind of a little pearl there, green pearl. And then when the caterpillar comes out, it looks like bird dropping. And so um, that's a way to, you know, birds aren't going to want to um, eat it. But as it get, grows in the uh, latter uh, moltings, it really becomes a beautiful green, light green um, caterpillar with a kind of a yellow collar. And when it gets, if anybody, if you know, a bird or a wasp um, comes near it, it might um, put out these two red um, kind of fangs to make it look like a um, a snake. And it has those false eyes too. Those are not um, that not the eyes. The eyes are way down near the mouth. It goes into this, um, the pupa stage or the chrysalis is really fascinating because it it spins this very thin um, line and um, silk line and it's, it's, um, it's, it is attached there. And then after um, a week or two, it comes out as a, as an adult. Okay, the whites and the sulfurs are medium-sized butterflies, and you know the white and and yellows basically. And I chose this one, which I see a lot of. I don't know. Um, somebody was saying that they'd seen a couple of butterflies in the their garden this morning, and um, I see the cloudless sulfur. Um, it's just a beautiful. It's it's one of the largest. I think it is the largest uh, sulfur. Um, butterfly um, in this area and it's almost a lemon yellow it's just a gorgeous one and um, again this you know the the egg almost looks like a um, a piece of of uh, rice uh, sticking up and then the caterpillar is a beautiful kind of green and and blue and has that racing um, racing stripe on the side. And then the uh, chrysalis um, is made to look like a leaf. And so, um, but again, it has, I hope you can see that little fine, um, fine silk, which is, um, which is there um, holding it in place. And then it comes out as a adult. Uh, the gossamer wings, actually, I stepped outside today and I, I saw um, a gossamer wing um, butterfly right on the cement just outside my door. Um, There's a hair streak, but this the one I'm going to talk about is the summer azure. And it is really abundant. Um, you often see them in a, in a large group. Um, and uh they're quite small they're, they're not big at all and 
the egg is is very sphere, uh, you know, a sphere, and the caterpillar is kind of nondescript. It's it's kind of a dark brown with lighter green, and and you can't really tell the head from the back, you know. And then also the um, the chrysalis is kind of nondescript and and kind of looks like a dead leaf, and then you have the um, the adult. And then you have the skippers, and the skippers are very fast, and and um, they're mostly um, browns and orange browns. And the one I see most at this time of the year, and actually see them all year round, all all spring and summer, um, are the um, silver spotted skipper, and it has that very bright uh, silver spot on the hind wing, and. Isn't that a gorgeous um, age? I just it's it's kind of green with that red on the top, and then there's the there's the caterpillar, and um, the silver uh, spotted skipper will um, take some leaves and they will um, curl the leaves and use some some silk and crawl inside that during the day so that they're kind of protected, and um, then when they um, go into their um, pupa stage again. They, when they finish up the caterpillar stage and become the pupa stage, they are um, in that um, pupa stage, wrapped up in a um, in a leaf. And then there are the brushfoots, and the brushfoots is a really a, a wide variety of um, butterflies. They tend to be a little larger um, and they're called brush foots because um, you know, all insects have six legs and the brush foots, their front two legs are very tiny and they almost look like brushes. Um, and they, they aren't used for um, grabbing onto any vegetation. Um, what they're, they seem to be used for is for smelling and for taste. Um, and there are four that I want to, to mention. Um, the buckeye is the first, and this has those big eyes uh, um, for the, um, and the hind wings and also on the front wings too. But if a bird is to grab the, um, the hind wing, the um, the butterfly can still live, and so um, and you'll see around you know you'll see butterflies missing some of their wings, and so that's kind of their um, protective um, protection from um, predators, and um, there's another I just marvel at all these different eggs and all the different shapes of them. Uh, this this uh, caterpillar is kind of nondescript, but it, it has these uh, spikes coming out of it. And then the um, the pupa um, is made to look like bird droppings too. And so um, it a lot of birds um, don't care about it. So that's to the good. And then there's the one. Then the red spotted purple looks very much, and it's about the same size as the, um, as the swallowtails, but it, you notice it doesn't have a swallow, um, it doesn't have those tails. And it too is um, using the, um, the protection of, it's, it's looks a lot like the pipe vine swallowtail, which is poisonous. And so um, the red spotted, a lot of birds will stay away from it because they've had one experience with a pipe vine swallowtail and they don't want any more. So they, they uh, leave that, um, they leave them alone. And this egg is fascinating. It's, it's um, hexagons and then it has spikes on each uh, end of, um, of each of the small, small ones. As always, they always um, lay the eggs at the end, the tip uh, end of a, of a leaf. 
And again, this looks like uh, bird dropping, so uh, birds stay away from it, as is the um, pupa or chrysalis. And it's a it's a gorgeous, gorgeous bird, uh, butterfly. Okay, the the last two I'm going to spend a little more time on because um, both of these are uh, migratory. Um, the Gulf fritillary in late, you'll see these here in and in North Carolina in late um, uh, September, October. But then when it gets very cold, they will migrate to the Gulf of Mexico. So that's why it's called Gulf fritillary. And um, so it's got some spikes on it. And then um, actually last year, Steve and I moved um, and I planted some um, passion flower plants. Um, I, I, um, I planted one outside of our, our apartment and lo and behold, the, um, the Gulf Rillaries found it. And so I brought in a few of the caterpillars into a net uh, tent. And here you can just see the how the um, Gulf Rillary um, caterpillar is in its last stage is making a J. And then it will make um, the pupa and then it will be um, come out as, as an adult. And so here's a, just a picture of the upper left-hand corner is um, right by the left window is um, the plant that I, I planted last year. And beautiful, the purple um, passion flower is just a gorgeous purple. I don't know if any of you have planted that. Um, and the fruit is, is lovely too. And then um, here's the, I'm just showing pictures of the um, of the um, egg that I, I took pictures of there. And um, the, the thing is, if you if you want to have beautiful um, plants, you don't all year, you don't want to plant on uh, the passion flower um, because the caterpillars will just eat them all off. They just devastate them and so this is just showing what what they did to that that um, plant didn't kill it came up the next year but and then on um, the chrysalis they they will um you know find something solid and so we have some above our windows and on our column there and underneath you know wherever um and then they will come out in a few few weeks and i these were just pictures of one that I saw coming out of um, the chrysalis. Um, and it's, it's just a beautiful sight to see them. And then there's, there's the monarch. And I'm sure you all know about the monarch and its migration. Um, the, um, the female will lay, lay the eggs and then I've um, actually I've got a picture of my um, of a monarch butterfly on my on my shirt here today. Um, it's a beautiful black, white, and and yellow uh, one. And I just included this. This kind of shows how the um, the monarch who will make a J, and then it will start to harden the body, and then it becomes this beautiful um chrysalid it's it's just gorgeous um it has kind of gold around the upper part and and near the bottom too it's kind of a lemon uh green it's, it's just a gorgeous one and then there's the adult and um if you don't know the difference between a male and a female monarch i will tell you um you see on the hind wing there is there's a little on the vein um, there's a little um, larger dot on on one on each of the hind wings, and that's um, a scent pouch, which attracts the female um, monarchs. So um, this is a is this is a male. 
um, the the migration of the um, the monarch is incredible. They um, start in um, oh in March or so. They've overwintered in the mountains um, in central Mexico, and then um, they will um, come north to about Texas or so, and um, they will mate, lay eggs, and they die, and the eggs will hatch, and then the tadpoles come, and then they, you know, become adults, and they will fly up into, um, you know, central eastern United States, and then the same process happens again, and then they go up higher, and then they go up higher, so it will be four t different times that um, the monarchs will be making this trip up to the northern climates. And the last ones, when they are up there in the um, northern climate, um, when the female lays the eggs, she is um, laying eggs of a super generation. And when those eggs come out, they um, they will eat, and um, they will um, go into the chrysalis, and then they become the adults. And then these are colder days and whatnot, and they start flying south, and they go all the way down to Mexico. So these, their, their great grandparents were, you know, spent the winter in Mexico and now they have been up in Northern, you know, United States and Canada and they make the trip all the way back to, um, to Mexico. And um, there's a Western, that's, that's east of the um, Rocky Mountains. West of the Rocky Mountains, they only go down to um, Southern California. So there's two different groups, but it's the same kind of thing they, that they've gone up and then they make this trip all the way back down. Um, and while they are in um, Mexico, they're, they're, they all cluster in these fir trees and they, when they became adults, their hor hormones were stalled. So they did not, the ones that are in north, the north did not, were not able to reproduce. So um, they come all the way south, spend the winter <laughs> in Mexico, and then the hormones kick in and they become um, truly adults. And when they fly up to Texas, they can then mate and lay eggs and uh, the whole process goes over again. Just, um, it is just phenomenal. Um, okay. Scientists did not know where the monarchs, they knew that the monarchs, they knew that hordes of mo monarchs made a trip south but they didn't know where they where they went. And of course, those native um, populations in the mountains of Mexico knew very well where they were, but not the, the um, North American scientists. And um, so Nora and Fred Yerkart in 1952, he was a professor in um, of zoology in um, Toronto, and he started uh, this trying to get um, citizen scientists to capture any monarchs that they saw, and then put a little tag on on the wing, and it said, "You know, return to University of Toronto." And in January of 1976, um, they were able to establish, he and Nora wrote a paper about where they were 
um, growing in, in the winter. And this continued, I, I taught fifth grade um, in Pennsylvania in, um, in the eighties. And I had my kids come, um, you know, we captured some butterflies and we would tag them and only like 0.004% of them are, are recaptured, but it has been helpful. And then in 1992, the program, change to uh, University of, of Kansas. And so now it's called Monarch Watch. And, um, you know, I tag them now uh, too. And um, someone asked me the other day, have, have any of yours that have been tagged? Are they, you know, are they, um, have we been captured? And no, they haven't been, but uh, some have been. And so um, this is now the Monarch Watch um, org. And if you ever want to get involved with that, just get on the uh, Monarch Watch org and you get information about that. Yeah. Oh, well, you're welcome. I'm glad, glad to share about butterflies. 